Good morning, good morning, it's time to rise and shine. Good morning, good morning, good morning, I hope you're feeling fine. Good morning, get up, get out of bed, it's time to wake up, you sleepyhead. Time to wake up, it's a brand new day, and we can't miss out on that day to decay. Get your day planned out to be at your best, and you gotta make sure you got the right back test. Wipe the sleep away, make sure you're awake, cause we don't have time for fat finger mistakes. And race your condos will pay the bills, but you gotta be quick to get those fills. Follow your plan to keep your pockets thick, if that market gaps up, look for Uncle Rick. Small gap down means it's time for a duck, but if it doesn't set up, then we don't give a f Good morning everybody, we know why we came here today, now let's get to it. Yeah. Let's go! Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. Today is November 2nd. Welcome to today's Zero DTE live stream. It's going to be a quick one. Only thing setting up this morning is our buddy Uncle Rick. So, and that's assuming it it does set up. Looks like it should. We've only got a 23-ish point expected move for the day. So, typically it's going to uh, set up well. S&P is up 37, NASDAQ up 178, Russell up 23, Dow up 200, gold and silver both higher, notes and bonds, big move higher, notes and bonds, 10-year yield down almost 3%, back down to 4.644, oil up half percent, natty gas down a couple percent, grains a little bit mixed, euro and the pound higher, so the US dollar weaker, and the and Bitcoin Staying above that $35,000 level. VIX down over 3.5%. Back in the uh, low 16 handle. Got uh, about two and a half minutes until the market opens. We've got our uh, remaining VXX verticals that I'll most likely be taking off today, getting another big contraction in volatility. So took half off at 50% of max. We'll take the other half off most likely today. I'm also going to be taking off my oil strangle either today or tomorrow. We are, the trade's profitable after adjustments. We're not quite to profit target, but we're getting kind of in that, down into that. Once we get down to around 40 DTE, I like to start finding a place to take those off to kind of reduce risk. Those are really designed as longer duration with very, you know, a lot lower gamma. So you start getting down in that range. I like to just peel them off. So finally getting some uh, contraction in oil volatility. We are very light on positions right now. It's been kind of scaling out. The last week or so, we've had implied volatility spikes. We've had implied volatility contractions. Two-sided price action. Can't ask for much more. I don't think there's a limit, Krish, on the uh, on the ratio. I've got some portfolio margin positions that I do eight by fives. That works just fine for toss. I know Morrow's had issues on interactive brokers with that, with different ratios. Yep, Lasoza just doing a Rick this morning.
S and P pushing at the open. So the 10 wide Rick's trading at about 1425. Move up. I'm going to move up a strike here. 4280, 4200, 4235. Yeah, Price going up, but little little initial IV pump going in. So I'm going to be patient getting in here. Just trading closer to 14, 15, 14, 25. Right at the open, you'd have been pretty quick to enter. All right, well, we're waiting on that. Um, we got our time fly that we did a double adjustment to, and prices continue to push higher. Still got a very flat T0 line, so I'm not looking to do anything at this point. Probably most likely end up holding this one until at least Monday. Unless it keeps pushing higher. I mean, if it gets up to kind of 4315 area, I will probably just kill it. Just bail. S P up 47. Interesting how market's rallying, but not getting, uh, Rick is not coming down in price. Got an ES Hedgehog. It's up a little bit. Was up more when the market was down. Got a gold reverse Hedgehog that's doing good. Gold will benefit from a uh, continued move higher.
Got a um, it was a good exit on the TGIF yesterday. Still have the single calendar with my downside vertical hedge. That one's now with this push. It's kind of moved up to the upper end of the range. I'll, I'll be closing this one today. We do get a little pullback. Might be able to scratch out a profit. You know, the other thing I may do today is add another time fly in a different expiration cycle. Obviously, we've got volatility contracting, which is not the most ideal time to be buying butterflies, but I'd be doing it with a little bit of a, I mean, like I always do, it's got a little bit of a bearish tint. So if we do get a pullback after this big rally, a lot of, a lot of times you'll see after a big, you know, one directional move after the Fed, it'll, it'll move there for a day or two and then. You get some a little bit of reversion. You know, it's just kind of that overreaction that you see a lot of times. Yeah, and then I'll be looking at either a single calendar or a TGIF as well. All right, now Rick's trading back down to about 1450. That's more in line where I wanted it. Move the strikes up as well. See what that's looking like. All right, I'm going to put my order in for Rick at 1440. Here's the Rick I'm trying to get filled in and just got filled. Uh, so what's your question on that back test, Chris? Well, I mean, when I look at a back test, the numbers kind of speak for themselves. 67% win rate, 12% drawdown. 18% more. So this is opening a trade at 2.55 p.m. So this is power hour. So this is a 5.4 power hour trade. Yeah, not bad. I mean, I, I don't like it as well. It, Compared, I mean, if you compare it apples to, you know, try to compare it as close as you can apples to apples to the other tranche one, it's it's not not as good, but not too shabby. VIX down four over four percent. Well, do do the side by side comparison, Chris. You know, I mean, some you know, you may like the win percentage better, but the drawdown not as much. You might, you know, you just got to compare those different things and and decide what you like better.
I mean, I can tell just by looking at the P and L graph that it's not as not as smooth. Looks like it might have a little bit higher win rate. It's got a higher drawdown. I mean, it depends on the starting capital comparison, so you'd have to do that too. But yeah, you just need to you just need to look at them side by side and decide which you like better. Some people are more comfortable with a higher win rate. Some people are more comfortable with a lower drawdown. Some people focus mostly on Mar, you know, so that's something that you've got to decide. It's not the it's not going to be the same for everybody. So VXX, let's see, it's up about 18. by 27.30. So we're at about over 65% of max profit. I'm going to go ahead and take that off. Build at 515. All right, so just posted that in the premium selling option selling channel. It's a nice winner. Uh, Bumblebee, what does drawdown mean? So that means your, if you're looking at your PL, so for example, looking at this, uh, this back test here. Can you see my screen? So, a on, on the uh, option omega back test, it shows max drawdown. So, that's the peak to valley, the biggest peak to valley uh, of your of your PL. So for example, I would assume that relates to right here. So you can see you're chugging along, you're chugging along, you hit a you know new high PL, you know, in this case it says 207,000, and then you, you go through a drawdown. Your PL is drawing down. You know, now it's down to one eight hundred and eighty-three thousand. So from two oh seven to one eighty-three, I would assume that's where that 12.3% comes from because that looks just eyeballing it. That looks like the biggest drawdown of this back test right there. So that's that's what that's what you they refer to when you hear the word drawdown. Yeah, or yeah, technically it'd be from here to this point here got a little bit lower. So from here to here, that would be the drawdown. And then once you retake the new highs of PL, then you're then you're out of your drawdown. So the MAR is your compound annual growth divided by your max drawdown. So let's see if that's so 226 divided by 12 equals 18. Yeah. So it's your it's your compound annual growth divided by your max drawdown gives you a mar. So it's kind of a quick quick reference to to determine compound annual growth rate divided by your max drawdown gives you a figure that helps it. Just kind of it's kind of a just a quick metric, um, so you don't have to do that calculation yourself.
Uh, data list. I th yeah, that's that's correct. That's why you'll see you'll see a back test that has a hundred percent win rate, but it still has a there's still a max drawdown because um yeah because there's there's an intraday drawdown even though you closed every single trade for a winner based on the back test parameters which is which is a good thing i'm i'm glad they did that cuz it it helps give you a little bit more reasonable expectations that okay yeah they were all winners but there's still a drawdown Yeah, and very important. Kelvin mentioned I I did a podcast episode on this too, and that has to do with the the drawdown of it. It kind of relates to the sequence of returns is another way to think about it. You know, this is a specific test starting January one through November one, so that drawdown is based on that time frame. Well, what if you what if you got in and started trading it right here in the beginning of July, right? When you see the P and L start to peak right before that drawdown. Well, your, your drawdown is going to be more than 12.3%, right? Because this is based on this, all these profits that you've already accumulated. Then you have that drawdown. So, uh, so it's a, of a higher, you know, your, your dollar amount came down on a higher value. So the percentage of drawdown is less, but if you started right here, then you had that drawdown right away. It's going to be Quite a bit higher than 12 percent. Yeah, I talked. I talked a lot about that in um, when I was doing some of my earlier Power Hour videos as well. Um. You know where I was. I was trying to get people to make sure you're going through the trade log, find find those areas where you have strings of losers. You know, uh, this one was what was that? July, starting around July fifth. So if we go to July fifth. So we had a couple of winners. So then starting, yeah, starting say July 11th. Okay. So if you, if you, you, you see this back test looks fantastic. Then you start trading it. And then all of a sudden, and you start trading it on July 11th, one, two, three losers in a row. And then July 14th. That's four or five losers in a row. Then you have a couple winners. Then you have four more losers in a row. So you've you've had um, you've had five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So nine out of eleven trades have lost. Most people most people hang up hang it up after that. They say, yeah, this is this is a this is not a good strategy. The back test failed me. The back test didn't fail you. you. Your your mental understanding of how back tests work failed you. You know, you can also look at that and say, well, that was that's the biggest drawdown that this back test has has had. Yep. But we all we also experienced that, right? If you all remember in July and August, tranche one was, I think it was more August, tranche one was struggling. There's a lot of talk about. Is tranche one is just not working anymore. It just doesn't work. No, it's just going through a drawdown. Every every strategy has a drawdown. Yeah, that's right. We had five, yeah, five straight red days. So the, yeah, so Bumblebee, that's the magic question, right? So the question is, when do you decide to move on from a strategy? 
And when do you decide to keep plugging away through the drawdown? And the the biggest factor comes down to your position size. Are you position sized appropriately to withstand a call it normal drawdown? Or you or or you could even think, you know, are you position sized to withstand a bigger drawdown than the back test has ever had? You know, so that's that's something that you have to decide. You know, for example, if you saw my November plan, I ended up cutting ducks out of my out of my uh, trade plan. The zero DTE ducks. Now, this was for a couple of reasons. Not just related to the duck performance itself. But <clears throat> let me just update this. So, you know, I mean, but look at this. Look at this drawdown we're seeing on these zero day ducks, right? It's just, just getting hammered. And this has, you know, pretty strict criteria that it's basically we're looking for a small gap down. And traditionally, when that happened, we would, you know, kind of, there's a high probability we'd kind of stay steady to higher. Well, what's happened in the last couple months is we've seen small gap downs and those, and the markets continue to run lower, right? Stopping you out. Now, even with this drawdown, this trade still has an 81% win rate. Still, I, I still think it's a really good strategy. Part of the reason that I ended up cutting it is because this exact same criteria is used for the JSPs. And so part of my issue wasn't necessarily that this is a terrible strategy and that, you know, I couldn't hold through that drawdown, but it was because my position size based on two extremely correlated positions was just, was just too much. So I ended up just deciding to cut one of them and I just decided to cut the deck and I'm going to still trade the JSPs. But there's, you know, I, I, my my uh, my assumption would be that this is this is a drawdown, and then this will continue to go back up eventually. I think I still think it's a good strategy, but that was just my my decision that I made based on my allocation between positions and that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, Ken, you know, let's get, you know, we're 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 human. We like to celebrate the wins, right? <laughs> we don't necessarily celebrate the losses. Although, you know, I mean, obviously I show all mine. I mean, you'll I just posted my monthly performance in the trader chat channel for the month of October. You know, this was brutal. I had I I lost over twenty five thousand dollars on ducks and over twenty six thousand dollars on JSP. So I lost over fifty K on those two strategies. And they were, you know, just, I mean, they're, like I said, they're very highly correlated, which is part of why I had to cut one of them. Um, so yeah, that, that sucked. I mean, I had a, I had a monster month, but it could have been even, even that much better if I didn't take a 50 K loss on those two strategies in October. But yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily, I mean, I, I, and I'm talking about you all in this community, the trading industry and all the bullshit that you see online. I mean, that's a different story. I, there, That's garbage. But when I see you all, you know, pumped and posting your profit for the day, I, I don't, I don't have anything against that whatsoever. I think, yeah, I think you got to celebrate the wins. PX had that little push that's been kind of chopping the last 15, 20 minutes. Uh, Bumblebee, what causes drawdowns? IV changes? I mean, yeah, I've, depends on the test. You know, 
just let's just go back to this example. What caused it, what caused the drawdown on these ducks? Well, price gap down just a, a little bit between 0.1 and 0.5 percent that day. You entered because that's the criteria, and then price continued to run down. So that in that case, it wasn't necessarily implied volatility that was the issue for this drawdown. It was big outsized moves, and and you you know you've probably noticed over this period of time that we've seen this drawdown. You know, for me, every day I, I draw the expected move on my chart, which I haven't moved the lines yet today, but I look at what the expected move is to start the day. And I always plot these lines. Well, we, we've had, we've seen more moves outside of the expected move in the last month than usually you see in a year. Sometimes I could be exaggerating a little bit on that, but we've seen a lot of moves outside the expected range outside the expected daily range. And in this case, we had a lot of moves outside the expected range to the downside. So these were getting stopped out. So it depends on the test. Sometimes it's market, you know, like power hour, same thing. Um, you know, when, whenever we take losses in power hours because price moved too much. Uh, implied volatility obviously has something to do with that because the higher the implied volatility of those zero day options, the wider your range is going to be. So that helps, you know, let's price move around more without getting stopped out. So just, it depend completely depends on the strategy you're, you're trading. Yes, sir. So the total premium is all of all of your trades added up during this back test. So, for example, uh, let's see. On October twenty sixth, we took in a premium of seven ninety seven dollars and ninety cents. We're doing eight contracts. So 790 times eight, whatever that is, that that's the that's the total premium that we took in on this date. Well, the total premium, just all those added up between you know May 2nd through November 1st, the entire back test. And then the capture rate is how much how much of that total premium that you sold in this case, you know, we're collecting a credit. Uh, so how much of that premium do we actually capture? And that's what ends up being our profit. By the way, um, Bumblebee and anyone else really. So Matt from Option Omega put out a uh, backtesting boot camp. It's a free boot camp or free class on their Option Omega Academy platform that they just rolled out. Um, kind of, if you want to go, if you want to do a little bit of a deep dive on, on the back tester, kind of understand not only some of the basics, but some of the other criteria that you can use to, to build your back tests. It's not on YouTube. Just go to, uh, let's see, I think it's Academy. Yeah. Academy.optionomega.com. Then you click on courses and then back testing boot camp. There it is. Then you just sign up and you can get it, get it for free. Uh, I haven't had, I haven't done much with trade steward yet. I set up, uh, I set up one. Um, it's not, it's not functional yet, but it's just a, it's just a matter of time figuring out which strategies I want to, I want to, I want to try it with, but I haven't done any yet.
Nice, Anil. Yeah, that end of October 26th and 27th was a painful one, I bet. So those that's mostly JSPs. So just so puts and short puts and short calls based on NT trend. Cool. I got a question for you all. Something that's been kind of weighing on me. Something that's I've been trying to kind of think through especially after this last month of performance and we're talking about posting posting profits and losses i'm kind of i'm kind of concerned as these numbers continue to get bigger about posting publicly my trade performance you know like especially if we if we start going into a like a real depression you know a real recession you know, people are losing their jobs and stuff like that. And, and, you know, and then I'm, I'm posting, Hey, I made six figures this month. You know, I, just, I, I don't, I'm starting to feel very, I've always kind of felt weird about posting my profit and loss, but I I'm starting to feel even more uncomfortable. You know, trading is such an interesting thing, right? It's all about making profits. And so, you know, if I, if I worked in the, whatever, some other industry, you know, I'm not, I'm not going around telling people how much I made, right? Nobody else does that except for us. Right. And so a, you know, I don't know. I, it, it just, it just doesn't, it's, it, it it's starting to feel uncomfortable. And so I'm trying to figure out what I like, I want to, on one hand, I want to show people what the potential is, but on the other hand, I don't want to be a douche. <laughs> if that makes sense. So, yeah, I mean, percentage, you know, so that, and that, and then so percentages is an option. I mean, I could show percentage of my total account, I guess, but like, some of the, you know, a bunch of the positions that I trade now are portfolio margins. So some of those positions that I put on literally take almost zero buying power. So if I make a $10,000 profit on something that uses zero buying power, how do I calculate that as a percentage? You know, so I can't, so I can't, you know, I want to show all the different trades and all the different strategies and, you know, kind of how good they did. I mean, I guess I could show only win rate and then only profit as a percentage of my account value. It's kind of what I started thinking about. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of hear your you all's feedback. Yeah, E. Allison, I thought about that too. Maybe, you know, when I'm posting publicly, I'm just posting percentages and then to you all in the community who I know kind of understand and actually are learning the strategies and, and that kind of thing. Maybe I, maybe I post, um, you know, all the, a little bit more detail as far as, you know, the dollar amounts and stuff like that. Well, like I said, Kelvin, I mean, I, I also want to be able to sh show people that, I mean, the whole reason I started posting my performance to begin with is because I didn't, when I first, when I was first started trading, I, I didn't do that, but I got so many requests from people wanting to know the performance. So it just, I was just like, all right, well, I guess I'll just post my performance.
Trader Bianca, I felt for a while that posting dollar amounts is a bad idea. I think it's awesome that some people do make a bolo, but for new traders, it can have a number of negative effects. It just like, yeah, that's the other thing. You know, I don't, you know, there's still way too many people that copy my position size, not because it has anything to do with their account size, but because that's what I did, which is just crazy to me, but it still happens no matter how many times I say, don't do it. You know, and then we got the, you know, you, I mean, we live in a society of a bunch of frick, you know, it's living in a litigious society too. So, you know, that's the other thing. It's like, no matter what my intent is that, you know, I'm being a hundred percent transparent, way more transparent than any other joker out there. I'm doing the right thing. I'm, you know, I'm teaching people how to trade the right way and stuff like that. But there's always the loser out there who can't, make it on his own. Who's going to try to find a way to get what somebody else has. And they, you know, now they're seeing me post, you know, six figure wins in a month. You know, that just, that's the other part that kind of makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Like that, that idiot who tried to blackmail me a few weeks ago. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a guy like that. Meanwhile, SPX fell asleep. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think what I've kind of what I'm leaning towards is, you know, I still want to. I still want to, it's just, you know, on our performance page, uh, on our website, I still want to, I still want to continue posting every month, but I think I'll just do that based on a percent total, total profit based on a percent of account value. I just won't be able to go through each position or each strategy and kind of show how each one did because it's just not, it's just not possible with portfolio margin. Um, and then internally to you all, I'll just, I'll still continue to kind of show the more detailed. I think that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. Appreciate that. Lasoza. Opt for dollar. Any trader hawk news? Um, what kind of news are you looking for? I I've been continuing to trade on it. I got some t-shirts left. Opt for dollar. We'll go to it if CS kills toss. Sorry, brother. You're going to have to expand. I'm not sure what you're asking. Appreciate that fast fifty seven thirty one. Appreciate it, Trader Bianca.
Well, the only the the main issue with Charles Schwab is um, the margin requirements for calendars at this point. So I've I've enjoyed trading calendars on TradeHawk. So if that's your if that's your concern, I mean I don't I don't I don't see Charles Schwab killing Toss. It better not kill Toss. <laughs> That'd be a That'd be devastating, but yeah, the margin on calendars is kind of the big issue, at least right now. Yeah, Allison, you're not you're not getting any uh, margin issues trading calendars on Schwab, huh? I've heard I've heard both sides. I think Annette, I don't Annette, I don't know if you're on here, but she. She's trying to post calendars and she's trying to trade calendars on Schwab and she's, you know, they're treating it like naked options. So it's kind of odd. I've heard this now from multiple people, multiple traders having both sides of the equation. Some having, some saying no issues, some saying issues. Opt for dollar. My accounts are still with TD. So no, I have not. I have not experienced the Charles Schwab experience yet. Appreciate it, Kelvin. Yeah, execution on Tradehawk's been great. Yeah, Tasty is another option. I would just say they're, you know, the risk graphs for calendar, any kind of calendarized strategy is pretty, pretty worthless, but you can always use uh, option strat for that as well. Yeah, I was told I was going to be moved in 2024. Somebody else was told they were going to be moved in. I think it was Annette. She was going to be moved in 2024. And then all of a sudden they got, and then all of a sudden she got moved. <laughs> so I've also been told I'm getting moved in 2024. So hopefully they do stick with that. I've heard, um, I've heard some of it now has to do with trading futures. I don't think Schwab is ready for futures. I don't know if it's just, I assume they trade futures, but maybe it's just futures on toss or something like that. So if you if you trade futures, then you'll you'll be one of the last to get pushed over. They tried to they tried to push you to Schwab Krish and you and then they switched you back. Okay. Yep. Only power hour for me. Rick and power hour today. Uh, the uh, kind of the retail stated commissions on uh, TDA Elliot are 65 cents a contract. But they, you know, depending on your trading volume, you can negotiate. I'm not sure what... Uh, not sure how Schwab will be negotiating, but I think I'm, I think I'm doing, I think I'm getting 35 or 40 cents a contract. I hope they grandfather us. I would, that would be the smart thing to do, but who knows? Well, this was supposed to be a quick little uh, get in Rick and be done session, but good conversation. I appreciate you guys 
feedback and just uh, appreciate everything. Love hanging out with you guys. But I think I will get off here, get some other stuff done. Then we'll come back for power hour. All right, all. Have a good day. Chat with you soon.